Years ago, when you interviewed for a job, they'd ask you silly things like what makes you qualified for this job, and why are you a good fit for our company. Then, a bunch of socially awkward college freshmen decided to rank the attractiveness of their classmates, accidentally became the richest people on the planet, and decided, enough with these dumb questions. I understand humans better than that, which is why I'm frequently mistaken for a robot. And so it became that Facebook, Google, and the rest decided to use their influence on the job market to mess with us. To make a generation of graduates memorize the answers to questions like how many golf balls can you fit in a school bus, and explain polymorphism to an unborn fetus. Like it or not, golf balls and polymorphism are apparently what it takes to get a job in the 21st century. And so, today, I'm doing a little pro bono work, preparing you for your inevitable job interview question. How many holes does a straw have? This episode is sponsored by CuriosityStream and Nebula. Get both for just 15 bucks a year. There are two main camps in this whole debate. The first begins its opening argument by asking you to imagine a donut. How many holes does a donut have? To which every functional adult replies, one, duh. One hole proponents then explain that really a straw is just a long stretched out donut. Thus, Occam slippery ergo atheism, straws have one hole. But now, Mr. Interview Candidate, this is Google. We're saving the world over here. We work on big, complex problems, like whether we should give our employees the right to unionize, and whether or not we should pay our taxes. The answer one just isn't going to impress anyone, now is it? What if straws, uncomfortable TED talk pause, have two holes? This camp asks you to imagine a really long hole. So long, let's say, that it went from one side of the planet to the other. Would that be sufficiently long enough to qualify as two holes? If so, then you admit there's some amount of distance where what was once one hole becomes two. And even if you still don't agree, imagine this tunnel through the earth twisted and turned a million times over, going in all directions, in a kind of planetary maze. Now, few people would call this one hole. Likewise, imagine if you dug a hole in the sand on the beach, then a few meters away, another hole, and then connected the two. Someone might walk by, not seeing that they were connected, and say, there are two holes on this beach. You'd be silly to correct them. Clearly, the one verse two hole question rests on to what extent are the two openings, one far enough apart, and two distinct enough from each other. These criteria are the only way to square the two conflicting intuitions the donut and the earth-sized hole. Now, some topology-inclined viewers will argue that, well, actually, mathematics proves that straws have only one hole. But I'm not a topologist, and I'm certainly not comfortable handing over the reins of the English language to any old Joe obsessed with the properties of a geometric object preserved under continuous deformations. If the question is, is a hole the hollow space, or its opening, the answer should depend on the context. For example, humans have more than one interconnected hole. Should we count them all as one? No, because each one is distinct, and apart from the medical context, the opening itself is the relevant part in conversation, not the interconnectedness. Likewise, a straw effectively has an entry and an exit, each fulfilling a slightly different role. In fact, many straws have two distinct ends. We don't really interact with the space in between, it's just there. Maybe you don't like the fuzziness of these criteria, but might I suggest your desperate need to find an easy answer, one or two in every instance, may be clouding your judgment, and more importantly, preventing you from getting a job at Google? You're welcome. Here's a plan with zero holes. Use the link in the description to watch the full extended version of the videos on my main channel, Polymatter, and early access to the videos on this one. For just $15 a year, you also get access to CuriosityStream, where you can watch thousands of great documentaries, like this beautiful one about Yellowstone. Sign up with the link in the description, and you'll get an email with access to Nebula.